What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video and welcome to what is an almost perfect day out here in beautiful Colorado. Uh, it's a little cold out. It's like 21 degrees right now. So if I'm a little shivery, sorry. What I want to talk about today was just kind of give you guys a view of the car, kind of how everything is. Uh, haven't cleaned anything else up. Haven't had any paint correction or anything like that yet. This is basically Got it from the port, drove to Omaha, did the photo shoot in Omaha, and now it's back in Colorado. So this is gonna be the first video where we really go and kind of break things down um, and kind of take a deep dive into the car. Now, overall, this thing is in exceptional shape. Keep in mind, the car's 25 years old. I mean, if you're 25 and watching this video, I'm sure you got some scars, some broken bones, all that kind of stuff over time, you know? So, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, and I wasn't expecting it to be. Now, the car's got about 89,000 kilometers on it, which works out to be 55, 56,000 miles, kind of somewhere in there. Overall, I'm super impressed with the car. There are, however, a few things that need to be taken care of and addressed. Now, most of these I knew about before the car actually got here because I did get the inspection and everything done. However, there have been a few things that I've uncovered since the car has been home. So why don't we go ahead and jump in and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Now, starting with the exterior here, uh, the paint overall is in really great shape. It does have some scratches. It needs a good polish. Um, you know, some rock chips and stuff like that. But overall, I think this will clean up really, really nicely once it's done. Now, if we come over here to the headlights, they did polish these before it left uh, Nagoya. However, there is a little bit of residue and stuff on here. I don't know if that's just, uh, you know, from towing the car uh, or what. So these definitely need to go and get polished up a little bit as well. Coming over here to the grill, there are a bunch of like shiny spots from like rock chips and stuff like that to where it's just not blacked out. Need to go touch that up as well. Probably get a new GTR badge too. Coming over here to the wheels. I love these wheels. However, we are missing center caps and that's gonna drive me nuts. Now, if we come underneath the car, there is a little bit of surface rust, both on the frame rails, as well as the uh, bottom of the fuel tank here. Nothing super crazy, that can definitely get dealt with pretty quick. Now, the thing on the exterior of the car that annoys me more than anything else, and this is something I did not realize on the inspection, probably because I should have asked and I didn't, um, is this right here. So if you look over here on the left side of the car, passenger side, we got this nice little GTR end cap on the wing. On the driver's side, it's not, there's nothing there. Now, overall, the engine bay is in really, really great shape. There are a couple things in here um, that are just worn out, kind of need to replace too. Uh, specifically, if you look right here at these, like those are, this is like not really being held in there. As well as what it could be, There's that's that's bad. That needs fixed. Coming over here, there's definitely, I don't know how well this is gonna turn up on the camera, but there's like overspray all up along here. Uh, you can really kind of go and tell. This looks like it was really roughly ground down. I've seen quite a few RB26s. I've not seen one that was that kind of gouged out. The last thing is coming over here, and if one of you guys could tell me about this, I'd really appreciate it. So, coming over here, obviously the rear wiper is gone, so that one's going to be missing. There's also got one here for fog lamps, and there's definitely wires in here, but there's no relay. So, I don't know. If one of you guys know the part number for whatever relay that is, I would definitely love to install one and see if I can actually turn those things into fog light. Now, the last thing in here is funny because I had the same problem on my Supra. It is this. This hood insulator is destroyed. Now, I do have another one of these sitting in my office, so this one will be replaced here soon. It's even got these uh, little plastic deals and stuff like that, so that'll be nice and new here shortly. No worries. Another thing kind of on the exterior here, this weather seal is like super worn out. Uh, I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but like this is all cracked and dry rotted. And this wiper cal seal right here, I don't know if you can order a new one of these by itself or not. I kind of hope you can. Uh, but this is like popping off on both sides. In fact, like most of the passenger side is just like completely missing. So um, if you guys know if I can order this part by itself and what the part number is, I'd really appreciate some help on that. That'd be cool. I hope I don't have to order a whole new cow. Last thing on the outside of this car before we jump into the interior is going to be the hatch. Now, overall, these shocks are pretty good until you get to like right about there and then it just like drops on you. So they do okay. They do okay. They're not great. Um, I definitely want to go and replace these. This is a pretty common issue though, especially for these cars. Uh, they just don't last for a while. I had to replace them on my Super too. I mean, keep in mind they are 25 years old. So now the rest of the trunk is in pretty great shape. We come down here. We still got the full spare, everything like that. Uh, I'm not going to pull this out of here. They did wind up doing over at Garage Defend, uh, like some rust repair and stuff underneath here. Um, apparently moisture was getting in some way, but they did go ahead and take care of and fix that for me. Now the interior of this car is definitely a spot that is going to go and need some love. Obviously 25 years of seat time, even if it doesn't have a whole lot of kilometers or anything like that on it, I mean, it's still going to have like a good bit of wear and everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into some of this. A lot of it I'd either like to replace or reupholster. 
Not really sure exactly which ride I want to go with it yet, but we'll kind of figure it out. If you guys have some recommendations, definitely leave me a comment in the section below. I'd really appreciate the help. So this is your driver's side right here. I do have a slight puncture right there, which is like a lot more evident when you're actually going and sitting in the seat right here. If the uh, floor mats and stuff are kind of roached, but you know, 25 years old, they're not gonna be super great. Uh, we do have a little bit of uh, like rust or salt buildup or something like that on the carpet here. So probably what I like to do is go ahead and take this out completely and just like pressure wash it, clean it up, make it all nice. Over here on the driver's side door card, there is this like really crappy like vinyl wrap on a switch plate and I'm not really sure why. So it was definitely not a good job. It's definitely not real carbon. I would love for it to be real carbon, but it's not. Um, other than that, I mean, it's got a couple of punctures and stuff on it, but again, 25 years old, nothing crazy. All right, so now that we got some heat going, let's go ahead and jump into some other stuff on the inside of the car that needs fixed. Specifically, let's go ahead and start with the steering wheel. Now, this is one of the things I knew was pretty bad, like even just in the listing pictures and stuff before I even talked to the guys over at Garage Defend about acquiring the car. This thing was roached, and I don't know how well the camera's actually picking this up or not, but I mean, like this is destroyed. I do have a new steering wheel on order. It's supposed to be here in a couple weeks. Um, Honestly, I can't remember where it's coming from, but it's gonna look really good. I'll do a separate video on that because uh, it is the three spoke R34 design and we're gonna have to make a couple tweaks because uh, this airbag setup is gonna work. Coming over here to this side, this is a new surprise. This uh, this vent right here is like completely, like it's just, it just comes out. It doesn't like click into anything. So yeah. And another thing coming over here, like this is like, kind of connected a little bit to the rest of these. It definitely needs a new vent right here. Like this is like, it's like two thirds functional. It's almost there. I'll get new with one of those too. As far as the rest of the interior goes, I mean, everything else, um, as far as like seats and stuff go, look really great. Part of my jacket and stuff back there. Still got some import papers, but um, overall it's awesome. I mean, even all this, like this isn't terrible. All that stuff's looking really good. Coming over to the passenger side door card though, this, honestly, this, I need to fix this. So if you look right here, I mean, this switch plate is like popping out, doesn't stay put. This thing's like all flopping out down here, doesn't stay put. And this part right here is just like super warped. It's supposed to be flush and like nice and tight, but this is like all peeling away. So I need to get like a whole new armrest or door card or something, I'm not really sure. Uh, probably gonna replace the seatbelt buckles and stuff too, which those are pretty cheap. Next thing, uh, so we got my toll pass right here. This, uh, now keep in mind the car is on right here. You can see revs are up, right? I should have power to this little Cusco deal, but it doesn't work. So I need to go and trace these back to figure out if this is like a unit problem or if it's just not getting any power or something's not connected somewhere. I'm not really sure. Oh, another thing. So this is something else I need to replace. This is the original Japanese radio. Uh, apparently they operate on different frequencies and stuff over there. So I have literally like one radio station right now. And like right now it's not even wanting to work. But uh, this USB thing, I did go and try to connect to my phone, except it tells me uh, that I don't have any songs on my phone. So I can't listen to like Spotify or anything like that. So what I'm probably gonna do is get a, uh, somebody makes a relocation panel where you can go and take the HVAC controls and bump them to right about here delete the ashtray and the uh, cigarette lighter, which is fine for me. And then I'll be able to do like a big doubled in unit, like right up here, uh, do like Apple CarPlay and stuff like that. So I'll make a separate video on that as well. Um, think that'd be a nice addition to this little, little pod right here. Oh, I need window tint too. I really hate driving around in fishbowls. So that is an up close and personal look of my 1995 R33 Skyline GTR. I know it sounded like I was complaining a lot in this video. I really wasn't, I'm sorry. I just kind of wanted to go over everything in detail. Um, kind of give you guys a baseline of like where this project is starting versus where it's gonna go eventually. Overall, the car's in a really great shape. I mean, it's nothing that you would not expect out of a 25 year old car. And the things that are worn out are worn out. I mean, like I said, I replaced a lot of the same stuff in my Supra, so that's a really big deal. Uh, that said, the stuff I would like to address just to get the interior and like some of the other stuff up to spec, I probably want to go and address first before I jump into the performance mods, which kind of brings me to my next point. Right now, kind of the short term goal for the car is about 600 ish wheel horsepower. And when I say short term, I mean like the next probably year or two. 
And then long-term goal, uh, I'd like to do about an 800 horsepower build. That'd be a super fun little street ripper. Uh, take it to the drag strip, things like that. Um, and just have some fun with it, you know? I mean, I don't want 13, 1400 wheel horsepower car because then you wind up with 13, 1400 wheel horsepower problems, like a Supra. What I'm thinking right now, probably start with the wiring harness CCU. This is like for performance mods after the rest of the stuff's done with, right? Um, start with wiring harness CCU, maybe do a single conversion, 64, 66, uh, something like that. Some ID 1050s kind of upgrade the fuel system a little bit. For the ECU, I'm thinking Haltech 2500. I really don't have a need for an R5, but I mean, if you guys can like talk to me about ECUs, especially if you're more versed than like the uh, RB26 area, I'm coming from 2Js. So some of the stuff similar, other stuff is just kind of like completely different. So if you got a different suggestion on ECU, definitely hit me up in the comment section below, please. For front end intercooler and intake manifold, I'm probably gonna go and hit a plasma man. That dude makes some really, really great stuff down in Australia. Um, and honestly, I think you Aussie guys, if anybody from down there is watching this, I think you guys got this RB stuff figured out. So hopefully I can bring some of that to the States and give you guys some good content here as well. For the exhaust manifold, I'm probably gonna be doing a full race deal and then the Tome three and a half inch exhaust all the way back. I'm probably not gonna need four inch. I mean, not on this car, not if I'm only doing 800, like that doesn't make any sense. So the Super did just fine. That did 882 on a three and a half inch exhaust. This should be fine too. I also want to do a gut rag swap on this car. For you, those of you that don't know, uh, the R34s came with a six-speed manual gearbox, and it's really, really similar to the one that's in the Supra already. It's made by the same company and everything. Nismo, back in the day, actually used to make a six-speed conversion for the R32, R33. Uh, it had a transmission transfer case. Um, I think it had like a Nismo twin plate clutch in it or something, if I remember correctly. And it had the forward drive shaft I think there's like one other thing maybe. There's not a whole lot you need to change in order to go and run a six speed on these cars. So I'd definitely love to go and do something like that too. And then take you guys along for the ride on that as well. So if you're keeping up with kind of the running total that I had just mentioned, uh, you know that basically everything I said is gonna run me about $40,000. I don't really have 40 grand to go dropping on this thing like that. However, if somebody wants to sponsor me so I can go and bring you guys more content faster, I would totally appreciate that. That'd be amazing. Either way though, I'm gonna be taking you guys along for the journey. It's gonna be a great time. I cannot wait to really go and get elbow deep in this car and really start wrenching on it. I will be doing a video on registering the car here pretty soon. I got a couple appointments the next couple of weeks uh, where I'm gonna go and get that part of life squared away, as well as just the entire buying process, uh, you know, importing it, everything else you guys might need to know if you guys wanna go and do something similar to this. Um, I'll be putting that together as well over the course of the next few weeks. So if you want to see some of that, be sure you go and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you can be the first to know when that new content drops. Other than that, I will see y'all very soon in the next video. Catch you guys next time.